Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. So here in a few weeks, I'm gonna be getting back on that Milsim West grind. We just got done with the winter break and we're about to go into the winter into summer season. And the first few events of this season are uh, heckin' cold. <laughs> with the first one being Road to Kharkiv in Clovis, California. Even though this event is in California, it is one of the coldest, if not the coldest event that we host uh, because it is held in February. But Clovis, California actually gets kind of cold and the weather there is pretty unpredictable. Uh, during the day, it's usually okay, you'll be fine. But at nighttime, it gets really freaking cold. And last year, which was my first time at this AO, I did all right, um, I packed okay. The main thing that I really uh, suffered with was when I was trying to sleep. My sleep system was not up to par wood, which was required for that type of cold weather. I was using the bivy sack along with a wooby inside the bivy, and I definitely suffered. So I made a few changes to my kit to make it so I'm not only just uh, surviving out there, but I'm thriving. I know a lot of guys are like tough guys, and it was like, oh, I can tough it out with this type of gear, but even if you don't quit the event and you're just, uh, you know, huddled underneath your uh, whoopee and you're shivering to death, but you don't quit, um, you kind of do because we are out there to do a military simulation or infantry experience. But, and if you are hiding underneath your snivel gear and your whoopee uh, shivering to death and not going out on patrol, how useful are you to the platoon in your squad? So in this video, I'm gonna be going over my winter packing list for these colder Milsim West events. That way, if you've watched this video and maybe take a few pointers of the type of gear you might wanna bring out there, you won't be one of those guys who leaves halfway during the event because you're super cold. All right guys, to start things off, let's talk about the ruck selection. So as you can see, I have a fairly large rucksack and you don't have to have this specific ruck. This is from Crossfire, but a large Alice pack would work as well or your misty ranches and stuff like that but you want to have a fairly large ruck that way you can actually adequately fit all of the uh, snow gear and your sleeping bag your wet weather gear all that kind of stuff into your ruck versus having a smaller pack and you having to like lash things and clip things to the outside of the pack which really leads to an awkward loading and that is another reason why guys struggle especially on the first night infills due to an inadequately packed rucksack so hopefully in today's video you can guys can get a good idea of the way i pack my ruck and it's just a good idea to have a large enough bag to fit all your stuff all right guys so first thing on the packing list here is the poncho this is a thing that is a red item on any of the packing list whether it be summer or winter the poncho is not really meant to uh, be used as like a wet weather layer you wouldn't really want to wear this as like your wet weather top if you needed to you could uh, but this is mostly meant to keep yourself dry as well as your ruck dry and your gear dry when you're away or at your patrol base so setting up either a hooch or depending on the situation usually if it's during the summertime i don't set up a lean to i usually just like take the poncho and lay it over my ruck like this. And it depends on how tactical I'm trying to be because a gypsy camp with like lean twos and all these uh, poncho structures out there, I really hate fighting through those things, especially when you're raiding another hey, person's patrol there. base and you have all these poncho structures set up everywhere. It's really, uh, it kind of breaks the immersion when you're trying to shoot at somebody through a poncho structure. And we do have a rule where you cannot use those as cover because if this is real life and I was shooting at you with a 545 gun, it would go straight through that uh, tent that you have set up and it would kill you. So if you are being raided in your patrol base and you're sleeping inside of your little tent and someone shoots your tent, you're automatically dead. But if the weather is bad enough, I would recommend setting up some type of structure. But if it's summertime and it's raining, I usually don't bother and I just kind of drape this thing over me and lean up against my ruck. Another cool thing about the poncho is you can lay it out on the ground like this and it is a good way to kind of separate yourself from the ground underneath of you. And if this was like an actual patrol in the military, this is how you would do your MWE. You would lay out a poncho and you would check your buddy on the poncho like this. Make sure his ammo is all loaded, you know, his face camo's up and kind of just check his gear in general. And that way, if anything falls off, 
it is on the poncho and not on the ground. I'd also like to mention that this poncho is from Varsaleka. I got this thing from them about three years ago and I've been using this same exact poncho for all the Nelson West events that I've ever worked. And again, this is the type of poncho that we're talking about when it comes to the packing list. Because I see a lot of guys when we're laying them out before the event and they show me their poncho and it's some disposable like clear plastic Walmart thing. Um, I get it that that's a poncho, but when we talk about poncho, it's a military style poncho like this. All right guys, so for the second item and another item that I would kind of consider to be a red item, especially for a cold weather event, is a good sleeping pad. I like this one right here. This is a Thermarest and I have used this exact same Thermarest, even though it's kind of beat up for every single Milsom West event that I've ever worked for the past two plus years. And I really like this thing. I'm not a huge fan of the inflatable ones. Some people are, those inflatable ones get really small, but I have had those things pop on me many times when I was in the military. And I like just a good old fashioned uh, sleep pad that you see here. These things are really cheap. They weigh absolutely nothing. And I usually just kind of like strap it underneath my um, flap here on top of the rock. That's how I run it. Some people run it down below, however you want to do it, depending on how your pack is set up. But a good thing about this thing is it's going to separate you from the ground and how you're going to lose a lot of your body heat when you're trying to sleep is through the ground. So you want to have something between you and it and a good sleeping pad like this works out great. All right, before we dive further into the ruck, let's talk about the uniform and what you, I would typically wear out to an event like this. It really doesn't change that much between a warmer event and a colder event for the base uniform. As you can see here, this is like what I typically wear. I got this oversuit top. This is an SSO Spectre top. Really hard to find these days. I am kicking myself in the ass because uh, I bought this thing off of Amazon before the Russian Ukraine war and used to be able to get this stuff like really easily. Now, uh, good luck trying to find one for a decent price. Maybe you can find one on eBay, but I really like this thing because it can be worn over a uniform. So if it's really cold, I might wear a uniform top like a combat top or just a field top underneath this thing. But typically I just wear a t-shirt and to, depending on how cold it is, I might wear like a level one kind of like long sleeve shirt. And that is like the upper limit of what I would recommend actually wearing underneath the uniform. I wouldn't wear a ton of snivel gear underneath your uniform because it is a huge pain in the ass to take it off when you have to move. Because if you're rucking or doing any type of strenuous activity, you do not want to have a ton of snow gear on uh, when you're moving. Because all you're going to do is you're going to overheat and you can become a heat casualty. Or if you don't go down, you're going to sweat a bunch. And when you stop moving, all that sweat doesn't go anywhere and it's going to freeze. So I would highly recommend not wearing almost like I wouldn't wear almost any type of snowmobile gear underneath your uniform. So largely stays unchanged. I'm not wearing any type of like thermal layers underneath of this thing. And if I need to layer up when I'm stationary, I'll put on a jacket or something like that. But when I'm moving around, this is pretty much what I'm wearing. Another thing to note here are these gaiters. And I do wear gaiters even at warmer events. And the cool thing about these is it's gonna keep your feet a little bit drier than if you didn't wear them, especially if you're going through tall grass and stuff like that. Um, it's not gonna keep them, your feet completely dry if they're completely submerged, but they also keep stuff out of your boots like twigs and critters and stuff like that. So I'm a huge fan of gaiters. These are from Outdoor Research. I've had these ones for about a year and a half now. And I think that Outdoor Research makes the best gaiters on the market. I had Outdoor Research gaiters issued to me when I was in Ranger Battalion. They were multicam. These are in black but these things are great. All right guys, now diving into the ruck and talking about the different layers and snivel gear and um, you know cold weather gear that I've got going on here. First off, socks. So I have four pairs of socks in this bag right here. I keep them separated so I don't have to like dig around through this stuff sack looking for my different socks. And uh, this is what I usually bring out there. I know the packing list says three. I bring out four and I have darn tufts in here as well as these socks that I'm pretty sure a lot of people don't really know about. But these are from uh, Omni Wool. You could you can tell them by this little crosshair right here. I actually got a, uh, issued some of these socks when I was in Ranger Battalion. And I fell in love with them. They're a lot like Darn Tufts, but I think a little bit thicker. And I do like these socks a lot. Darn Tufts are great as well. But I usually bring out three to four pairs of socks. And some events, you know, my feet stay dry and I don't end up changing my socks at all. Some events, I end up changing my socks and I go through all four of these things. So 
It is really good to come prepared with a change of socks. Your feet will thank you. Now going into the base layer, I talked about it briefly before, but um, usually I wear a t-shirt like this. I really like these Norarm uh, shirts right here. They have vents underneath the, uh, in the armpits right here, and they're actually kind of a thicker t-shirt. So it's really nice to wear, especially at a little bit of a cooler event. But if it is really cold, um, I might wear this. This is just a, I think, DevOps. I've had this thing for a while now. Um, it's just like a long sleeve, moisture wicking, kind of Under Armour style shirt. Even if it's right now, right now it's like 60 degrees. If I was wearing this thing right now, I would be pretty warm. So I would not recommend wearing something like this if you're rucking. Um, proceed with caution. Again, if it's like in the 30s and we're stepping off, I might wear something like this. But if not, I would not recommend wearing any type of snivel gear underneath your uniform top. All right, the next piece of snivel gear that I have and probably something that might stay in my ruck. I'm not really sure if I'm going to wear this. Maybe if I'm chilling at the patrol base and it's a little bit cold and it's not cold enough to warrant a bigger jacket. I have this hoodie here from Corinthia. And I really like about the Corinthia stuff is it really packs really tight in this hoodie just packs into its own pocket like you see here. I also have a Ranger Green one, but this M81 hoodie is the one I'll be taking out to the field because the Ranger Green one's like my nice one, the one I would like to wear without getting it beat up too much. But this thing's okay. If it got really cold and I'm just chilling, I might wear this thing, maybe take off this top right here and throw this thing on maybe for at the patrol base. But again, would not recommend wearing this thing underneath your uniform when not moving, especially when you're rucking. So again, proceed with caution when wearing something like this. All right guys, now going into the wet weather gear. So I also have this wet weather top and bottom as well as from Corinthia. And if it is gonna be raining out there and it is cold, you really want a good pair of wet weather tops and bottoms because if it's in the 40s and it's raining, you're not gonna just want the top. You're gonna to want the bottoms because your legs are gonna get wet as well. So I bought a wet weather top and bottom. This might stay if there is like 0% chance of it raining out there. Might leave this back um, in my bag in the car. But if it is gonna rain out there, Highly recommend wearing, getting a good pair of Gore-Tex tops and bottoms. And this will really like save you from being that guy who's like shivering to death from being cold. Even if you bring the nicest snivel gear, it is of no use if it is saturated with water and you're still free, uh, freezing to death. If it is a warmer event, um, sometimes I won't even wear a wet weather top or bottom. Um, I just kind of let it naturally dry because again, you don't want to overheat with something like this because this is going to trap in a lot of your heat. And this is honestly a pretty decent uh, cold weather top as well. But if it is warmer out there because we had an event earlier this year in Pennsylvania and it was like in the 70s and 80s and it was raining, I didn't wear any type of wet weather gear and I kind of just got wet in this thing. And throughout the day when it stopped raining, it dried out. But a lot of guys were wearing their wet weather tops and bottoms and we started to move and of course they started to heat up, their eye pros all fogging up, I look at their faces, it's all beet red. Meanwhile, I'm soaked but I'm also having a good time and I'm not overheating. So really proceed with caution again when wearing something like this but if it is freezing cold out definitely need something like that now going into the last few items i have in here the headgear so usually i wear a ball cap out there but if it's really cold a good beanie um and it is a lifesaver um, i have this one right here i'm not really sure what brand it is but i also like a neck gaiter or some type of face cover as well not only does this protect your face a little bit from being shot in the face by bbs but it does help with the cold i really like these ones from norarm especially this one right here um, mainly because my eye pro won't fog up when wearing something like this a lot of times when we're wearing like a neck gaiter or a balaclava and it's up over your nose man all that fog goes right up into your eye pro and since we're playing airsoft you cannot take your eye pro off so it is a huge pain in the ass to try to clean those off but with this norarm neck gaiter right here even though it allows a little bit more air to come through um, that is precisely why it doesn't fog up because you're able to breathe through this thing a lot more easily and it doesn't really muffle the way you talk so i really like these neck gaiters not a huge fan of the balaclavas but if you want to wear those it's up to you all right so another piece of kit that i'd highly recommend that you guys pick up it's not necessary but man these things are nice and is a hand warmer so this one's from apple fritter customs He's a good buddy of mine and he makes excellent hand warmers and these things are cool because they really are worn just like a fanny pack like you see right here and they are just a good place to store your hands. 
<laughs> now this one in particular has like a Sherpa lining on the inside where you see right here. I was actually at a local airsoft game. It was a night game and it was like 18 degrees outside and I was wearing this thing. And even through gloves like this, um, my hands were freezing when I was like holding onto the rail of my gun. And when I stuck my hands inside this thing for about a minute, my hands warmed up again. So these things are excellent. Also the hand warmers that you could buy, the um, disposable ones that the hot hands, you can buy at like Walmart. Highly recommend getting those. I don't have them on me right now. I had them yesterday, but uh, I had them in my hands and then my kids distracted me and then I lost them. So <laughs> I definitely plan on before this next event uh, in our you know Walmart run before going to the event, picking up a pack of those hand warmers. And those things are cool too, because you could store them inside of here and it gets your hands extra toasty. Now this next item, I wouldn't consider to be a must, but it is very nice to have. And it does add a little bit of weight to the ruck, but a heavy jacket that you can that you see right here that shoves really nice into this little stuff sack. This one's from, again, another Corinthia item, but a jacket that you can wear over your kit, just like this especially if you're just chilling in your patrol base, it's at nighttime, maybe you're checking the line, making sure your guys are pulling security. You're not out on patrol, but you wanna have something that's gonna keep you warm in the patrol base when you're stationary. A nice jacket like the, you see right here, this is one's brand new from Corinthia, so big thank you to them for sending this to me. You don't need a jacket you know, from Corinthia to do this. I had a jacket, it was a surplus one, it was a surplus uh, Russian uh, cold weather top, and it felt the same role as this one, but this one is a little bit nicer. But a jacket like this that, you know, for kind of some of the downtime and we're not gonna be sweating a bunch is very nice. As you can see, this jacket's fairly large and it's probably, you know, larger than what I really need. But the reason I did this is so I can wear it over my kit. I can even do this if I was wearing a plate carrier on, not just a chest rig, but I can also, if I really wanted to, zip it up over my kit like you see right here. And depending on how cold it is and what the you know, likelihood of contact is, I might just sleep just like this. You know, maybe have this thing zipped up and uh, you know, just laying up against my rock. Maybe I don't feel like we're safe enough to crawl into a sleeping bag and I don't think security's up. So if I wanna get some rest and it's really cold out, it's nighttime, I might just throw this jacket on, lean up against a ruck and I'll be fine. Now the last two items are gonna be the sleep system. So both the sleeping bag as well as the bivy sack. So the sleeping bag is what's actually gonna keep you warm and the bivy, bivy sack is what's gonna keep you dry. So if it's raining, um, and you're in the sleeping bag right here. Without this, your sleeping bag's gonna get wet and you're gonna be cold and miserable. So highly recommend that if you're gonna be out there and it's gonna be raining, bring a baby sack at least because it's gonna keep you dry. And last year, I only used this sack right here. This is another outdoor research product. And this is the uh, sleep system I was using for the longest time matched with a Whoopi. And I would just crawl into this thing right here and put a Whoopi inside there and I was okay. That works out okay when it's a little bit of a warmer event, but when it is like below freezing out there, you're definitely gonna want a nicer sleeping bag. I ended up getting this one right here. This is another Corinthia product. So big thank you to them. Love Corinthia. And I'm not like trying to shill for them too much. Uh, I legitimately like their products. And if you're on Rust War, some of their stuff is actually kind of kosher. So I ended up getting this sleeping bag right here. This thing is meant for below freezing. So as you can see here, it is quite large. I am a six foot three Astartes, but I ended up getting a even larger sleeping bag than I really need because I wanted the ability to uh, sleep in all my kits. Sometimes I don't take my kit off, again, depending on how safe I feel I am. I wanted to be able to get into my sleep system with all my stuff on and be able to store my gun in there as well because if I keep that zipped up, it's gonna keep everything warm and especially these airsoft guns. Again, they struggle when it comes to the cold, so keeping your stuff warm and your batteries warm is a uh, huge plus. So I ended up getting this sleeping rag right here and if it was raining out there and it was cold, I would put this this inside of this bivy sack right here. So again, a good sleep system is gonna make or break your quality of sleep out there. I know I say all the time that I don't sleep a ton. I do catch a few hours here and there, but I, really, but I really wanna make those few hours count. And if I have uninterrupted sleep for at least like two hours, I'll be better off than me like being constantly awake from shivering myself, <laughs> from shivering myself awake. So a good sleep system and quality sleep 
will make your time out there a little bit better. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about, guys, is waterproofing all of your gear. So it does you no good to have all this stuff and be prepared for the cold and wet weather, but while you're rucking and while you're away from your ruck, it rains and all this stuff gets saturated. So you wanna make sure that you can make all this stuff waterproof, and a good way to do that is just through simple, huge garbage bags, these garden bags that you see right here. And this is what I was doing in the military. I also had wet weather bags, but you don't really need expensive, you know, wet weather bags to do this. Just get some garbage bags. These are a red item on the packing list. I have a bunch more in this ruck right here. But what I would do is I would just open this thing up, put it inside the ruck and start putting my, packing my ruck and using this thing as a liner. And if you pack it correctly, even if you are like to go through a river, your ruck should float if you were to make this thing watertight. So I would highly recommend bringing extra garbage bags. And if you really needed to and you get them large enough, you can shove your entire ruck inside this thing. And if it starts raining and you don't have, and maybe you're using your poncho as a structure and you want to keep stuff extra waterproof, you can just throw your entire ruck inside the garbage bag and leave it under there and it's gonna be completely dry. So bring extra garbage bags. I know that they are a red item, but get these huge uh, leaf bags that you see right here. And these things are great and they're not typically gonna rip on you. Well guys, that's about it. I really wanted to do this video uh, just to kind of give you guys who plan on going to these events a good idea of what you might wanna bring to some of these harsher climate events. Because I've seen guys come to these events thinking that they're prepared but end up suffering and their grandma ends up dying and leaving halfway through the event. I wanna see everybody make it to the end and I feel like if you come out there well prepared, you'll have a good time even if it is like the bitter cold but hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did please consider dropping a like and subscribing you can also follow me on instagram at blue jean operator or go to my website thebluejeanoperator.com to find school shirts and merch which helps out the channel also guys i want to mention if you want to roll with me at one of these milsom west events all you have to do is sign up on usually rust for militia because that's usually my thing and just put uh, blue jean under like the team affiliation part and we'll know what you're talking about and we'll get you in my platoon it's as easy as that a lot of people ask like how do i get into your platoon all you have to do is ask also guys if you want to get involved with the channel a little bit more directly i got patreon helps me buy guns gear ammo airsoft stuff all the kind of stuff that goes into running this channel and it'll get you access to videos a little bit earlier than everyone else. But hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys next time.